Hello, class. Hello, Mr. Sylvester. Hey, Mr. Sylvester. I'm uh, I'm trying to sign the role. It looks like the site. Nah, yeah, go ahead. just put your name in the chat. Uh, I have to do some some uh, some research and then some reprogramming. Uh, what happened to my server was created with PHP and uh, it's been it was done years ago, and I've uh, upgraded to like five, but then they upgraded to seven, and and so what happens is a lot of the programming uh, functionality of seven. Well, five is not compatible with the seven, so I, I, I have to go back research and, and, and try to figure that out to see what, what, what I need to do to get that stuff working right. So every time, just put your name in the chat, uh, sign your name up in the chat so that I can have your names or whatnot. Because yeah. the, uh, the uh, how would I say it? The, the role might not look true to what it is, because of this, you know, but uh, but every time you come, just go in the chat and just put your name so I can have a a, a record to go by, and then I'll put that put you uh, in the role based on that. Yeah. All right. Okay. We last left off. Let me. I'm about to share my screen. Um, so I clicked on it. Share my screen. All right. Oh, where's my uh, vision? Yeah, we last left off. Uh, we had kind of uh, started talking about nested loops. All right, and nested loops uh, is just a loop within a loop. All right, so it's a loop that's inside of another loop. All right, and what happens is the outer loop still controls what's going on in the inner loop but then the inner loop performs until completion and kicks back out, the outer loop goes back into it. So I'll, I'll give you an example of what I, what I mean by that, because I think I, I, I kind of showed you uh, before, but let's look at it. Let me delete all this stuff out of here. So I'll take all this out. It's a program from a previous class. I'll take all this out. And I'll do it, man. And we could do a loop without even doing any kind of manipulation. Uh, zero. And so, like, say if I wanted to output a value, say I'm a, I'll use a for loop. Let's say for int x equals zero x less than say five x plus plus all right so from zero to less than five is how many times anybody how many times will that loop perform i put something like in here uh see out How many times will hello output? Anybody? Five times. Five times. Zero to four is five. I mean, zero to less than five is five. So if I run this program to show you what it actually will do, it's going to print out the five times. Well, it should. All right. So we have one, two, three, four, five. Now, so if I'm saying I want to perform this five times, but then within here I have four int y equals three. I mean, well, zero. I'll just use zero. Y less than three, y plus plus, and then I'll open my curly braces here. and close them here. All of a sudden now I have an outer loop that does what? Five, that iterates five times, but then I have this inner loop that will iterate how many times? How many times will this loop just by itself will perform? 
Three times. Three times. So if I'm saying I'm going to perform this five times, and each five times I'm going to perform this three times, well, each time I perform this loop, I'm going to perform this three times, that will be what? Five times three, right? So I should get what? Three sets, I mean, five sets of three, which is 15. So if I do a C out, uh, and I'll just show you a, a, a end line here, just to show you that it's going to break a line, and I'll run it. Look what we get. Three, 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 and three. So you see what happens? The first time when X was zero, it went Y, zero, one, two. Kicked out on three. X becomes one. Y becomes again, zero, one, two. Kicks out at three. X becomes two. Y becomes zero, one, two. X becomes four. Y becomes zero, one, two. Or three. X becomes four. Y becomes zero, one, two. X become five and it kicks out. Everybody see that? Everybody understand what happened? Question? No, not on that one. All right. Everybody understand that. Now, sometimes you might have a nested loop to read something to do whatever. Uh, in in uh, some cases, they use nested loops to read in uh, like two-dimensional arrays and sometimes three-dimensional or whatever. So that that can be, it can be used for that purpose also. But at the same time, it can be also used, like I said, if I want to process something five times, but every five times I want to do something three times, it can do that also, all right? So, uh, and, and like say, for instance, if I wanted to read in a student name and then three grades, all right? Student name in the outer loop, and then what? One, two, three grades, calculate the average. Outer loop, uh, read, in, read in the name, then three grades, calculate that. So it just depends on what your logic is. But a outer, you have a, a, a nested loop as a loop within a loop, all right? And, and you, can, you can have many different levels. Because I can even go as far as doing this, where I don't want to do it here, where I can do this, and I can do another for loop uh, or whatever, and I can say for int a z equals two, z less than oh, not x, z less than uh, I'll say zero, z less than I'll say four, all right. Z plus plus. All right. Now, didn't really change much. I just uh, added another nested loop. All right. So now I have a loop within a loop within a loop. All right. The loop within a loop within a loop. So what? Five times, three times, four times. So what? That would be four times three, which is 12 times five, and that's going to give us what? 60. Correct? So all of a sudden now we done just incremented that. We're gonna say, okay, the first five, the first time here, we're gonna do this three times, but but what? We're gonna do this four times. So we're gonna do one, two, three, four, kick out, one, two, three, four, kick out, one, two, three, four, kick back out here, fall into here, one, two, three, four, kick out, one, two, three, four, kick out, one, two, three, four, kick out. So that's what's happening. So if we run this, uh, and I'll just put an inline uh, here. I'll do C out. So why we why just why it's printing the hello at? So we'll see what's happening, all right? And I'll just I can say uh, C out. End of Y loop. Okay. I'll do that just to, so you'll see what happens. So when I do a debug and show you, do it now. All right, so look what happens. The first time, all right, let's look here, all right. So it's gonna fall into here, five is, okay, at this point, 
X is zero, Y is zero. But then it has to go from Z from zero to four. So what? Zero, one, two, three, less than four, less than four, kick out. Then it goes back here. Now X, I mean, Y becomes uh, one, zero, one, two, three for Z. Go back here and uh, Y becomes two, zero, one, two, three. All of a sudden you finish this loop, you go back out. It says what? You've ended the Y loop. Then so you're back to X. That's why X becomes one and you repeat it again. So you got 12, five times, right? So 12 times, 12 times five, 60, I think so. 12 times five is your 60, right? So that way we have those uh, three sets inside of here, three sets of four and five sets of the three, right? So one, two, three, 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 all right? One, two, three, four, and five, all right? So you see how, um, how loops work. So that's loops within a loop within a loop, which are nested, okay? That, that's what they call nested. Now, all right, so that's all nested loops are, all right? Uh, here they, we, we've used the fix uh, in the right, so we should know how to do that. Uh, we did that in the pre, I think the previous semester. But what they what they're doing, they're showing you in this program somewhat. You have sixty minutes, so you have to run sixty minutes. But in them sixty minutes, you have to run what sixty seconds. So you have to complete sixty seconds, and then when you kick out of the sixty seconds, then you go to the next minute, come back in. All right, sixty seconds, go back the next minute. 60 seconds, the next minute. So it just kind of gives you an idea of how a clock works, or, or if you were programming, how it would work where you have uh, 60 minutes, and inside the 60 minutes, you have the 60 seconds, all right? Which, you know, which would make up uh, the hour, okay? Which would make up an hour, all right? So it tells you to simulate a clock, basically, like I say, with the hours, you got 24 hours, so what? In one, one hour is what? 60 minutes. In one minute is 60 seconds. So this 24 hour clock simulation, you have the 24, the 60 minutes, and the 60. So all it does, it'll repeat this 60 times, kick out one minute, 60 times, two minutes, second minute, third minute, fourth minute. When it gets to the 59th minute, it kicks out, and that'd be what? The one hour. Next, the next be the next uh, hour, which is the first hour, if you're dealing like military time. So that's kind of what this is. Like, you have to kind of think military time. Because if you was thinking uh, uh, just the regular time, 1 to 12, then this would have to start at 1, in at 12, but then you'd have to have what? Your, 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 your number's going to reoccur because what? You got 12 o'clock at night, 12 o'clock in the morning, 1 o'clock at night, 1 o'clock in the morning. So the uh, 24 fits perfect in that you're not, you know, having the same numbers reoccur and being confused. All right? So then it just shows you how it's printing in simulation the second, 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 seconds. When it get to, uh, when this get to 59, then this will be one, then it go to zero to 59, then two, zero to 59, then three. And then when this get to 59, then this flips to like one, go through all over again from one second, the seconds to all the minutes. So it's just showing you the simulation of a clock, all right? But we know that's not the actual time, all right? Not the actual time. All right. Oh, uh, so it tells us uh, on this program, let's see, this program uh, averages three test scores, all right? It asks the user for a number of students and then a number of test scores, all right? So what happens here, it asks you to what? See in the number of students, see in the number of test scores. So these are the two driving uh, forces of your loop. So this say for int student is equal to one student less than or equal to number of students. So it's starting at one, 
but it's going to end at the number that you put in for the number of students. So uh, your total, every time you got a new student, your total will be starting at zero, all right? Because that you can't accumulate another student's average into uh, uh, the, ne the, 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 the next student. So then let's say for test equal one, all right? Test less than equal to num test. So now when we, we deal with zero to whatever number sometimes, and, and you're gonna you're gonna appreciate that when we start talking about uh or dealing with arrays. Because when we deal with arrays, the array position, the starting point or the subscript, the first one is always sub-zero, right? So that's why when you're looking at programs when we in the early when we, an early start loops or whatever, it always starts at zero and then less than uh, a number. But if you notice here, what they did, they're saying, okay, well, we're not dealing with arrays. So I could say I could start at one and do less than or equal to the number of, and, and that's still the, the range I'm needing. But if you were dealing with arrays, Starting at one would eliminate the first record. And uh, I know if if I was a person working at a company and I knew my record was the first record and a programmer started at one uh, rather than zero, I might not ever get paid. I might not ever get my benefits. I might be benefits. I might not even, even ever get not notices because my name may never ever appear in the reporting or whatever. So... When you deal with a rage, you start at zero, all right? So what happens is they're going to fall in the loop for the students, have them in the students, and then it's going to allow them to input however many grades and total up those grades, get the average, then go in, get the next student, get the number of grades and, and, and average it and give out the average, get the next student. So that's, in a sense, the purpose of, uh, loops within a loop, all right? So it'll allow you, and if you look here, score, first of all, the uh, in other number of uh, scores, and then in the, uh, for in, well, the number of students, and then the number of scores. So three scores for two students. So the first time the outer loop was zero, well, no, it was one, and it ran in one, two, three scores, and then it got the second student, and then what, one, two, three scores, and, and did what it had to do. All right. Any questions about uh, uh, nested loops? All right. Questions? So this here is uh, an important part of computer science. I feel that if you can kind of understand data storage, understand retrieving data, understand uh, uh, writing data, to storage areas, or rather than just to the screen, that'll give oh, that'll give you a big uh, big advantage in working with computers. Because if you notice, even if you're writing if you're writing web code, many times when you're writing code for the web, you have to be able to retrieve data that a user may input like and for instance uh if you create a website no matter well you can just have information just flat information is okay but most times you might have a screen and even if it's information then you might say okay if you like whatever whatever please fill in whatever to be on our mailing list or please give us information so that we can contact you through email through whatever so you may have to put in a given name, or address, email address, you know, a contact phone number. So that information has to be retrieved and then stored, all right? So this is somewhat of what we're looking at now. Like I say, rather than just saying, putting in information in a program and then it's popping on the screen, no, we retrieving it, we manipulating it, and then we storing it. So that what? Whatever data we done captured, and store it, somebody else can come behind us and pick it up and do whatever they need to do to it also. So data is not just being executed and just given on the screen. The next day you gotta start over and do the same thing over. No, I can grab a file, do what I need to do with it, 
put it back out there for somebody else. And give an example, when you go to the bank, when you go to the bank or you make a transaction, what? They have to what? Verify, or you have to input information that needs to be verified. Uh, so you go to a teller machine, it has to be verified. Now, that information should be somewhere in a database, wherever that, that, that system can access. So once you put in your credentials, then it validates whether or not you are that person. So it is what? It's working against data that's already in the system. So you dealing with data that's already there that you need to, that need to be may need to be manipulated. So once you get the uh, 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 get uh, authenticated, then you gain access to do the things that you are privileged to do. So now your bank account information is actually retrieved or can be retrieved and given to you. Like maybe your uh, your bank balances. Uh, the number of transactions available without charging or, or whatever it may be. So now you got that information, but then you need to make uh, a, a request against that information. You may want to do a withdrawal, all right? You may want to do a deposit or, or, or whatever it may be. So when you do that transaction, say you do a withdrawal, you, you have to what? Uh, put in or choose what it is you want to do, such as a withdrawal, then tell it the amount that you want to withdraw, and then that transaction has to take place, and then you get your money. Now, so if you and somebody else had a bank card, you went to the bank and, and withdrew some money, then they go to the bank. You don't want it to be where, oh, the balance at the beginning of the day was $500, but I went to the bank at 10 o'clock and, uh, and took out $200. So there's 300 left. But somebody goes to the bank behind you, you know, that has a card with, shared a card with you, and they go to withdraw $400, but and the bank balance is showing 500. No, it should be where what? Once you made your transaction, that, that data file is there then it can be used for the next transaction so that you won't be what? Overdrawn or, or whatever, all right? So I said all that to, to, to kind of get you to understand data storage and what's going on and how and whatever. So when a program needs to save data for later use, it writes the data in a file. The data file can be read from all right, the data can be uh, the data can be read from a file, all right, at a later time. All right. So the program that you have written so far, you just put in the data, calculate whatever, got your output. All right. More or less of a real time. Well, in a sense of real time, but just flat. Did this, got my data, that's it. I'm finished. Run the program again, got my this, got my data, do whatever. All right. So if the program is to remain uh, retain data between the time it runs, it must have a way of for saving it. Data is saved in a file, um, period, no matter what, no matter how. Big data, whatever, cloud information, all that's stored in files. It may be in the cloud, but it's still in some type of file format. format. All right. So, um, and usually stored on a computer's disk. That's usually usually because what, but now in a sense, we use many different platforms. Like I say, we got the web, we got web servers. And like I say, we got clouds, we got our own personal computers, all right? Data that is stored in a file can be retrieved and used at a later time, okay? Now, and then it tells us for most commercial software, you know, you have the word processors. Normally people write code, I mean, not code, write documents, save them. Like a lawyer might write, you know, have documents saved on their computer. Uh, image, somebody who take uh, photos or a uh, 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 designer, they may have Im image editors that uh, create images, crop Im images and save them. Uh, spreadsheets, you may have a, a person that, uh, accountant or, 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 or tax person, you know, they may have a uh, spreadsheets or whatever that they use for their uh, storing uh, their uh, information. 
Uh, you got gamers. Gamers like they normally have high schools or whatever. And they, they that information has to be stored somewhere, or the level they are at a game. You know that has to be stored. And then we have our web browsers. You know where many times, and they talk about the cookies. Many times the cookies allow you to get to a page quicker because if you've been there before, it'll use the cookies to what pull up that uh that page without having to do the traffic of trying to find a DNS and whatnot all over again. All right, so programs that are used in, uh, uh, in daily business operations rely on extens uh, ex rely extensively on files. Payroll programs keep employees' data in files. Inventory programs keep data uh, about a company's uh, products in, in files. Accounting systems keep data about a company's financial operation in files. And like I say, so on and so forth. All right, the police, they keep your information in files and whatnot. Programmers usually refer to um, the process of saving data in a file as writing data to the file. And I'll show you how that's done. When a piece of data is written to a file, it is copied from uh, a variable in RAM, all right, to the file. This, uh, and it says this illustrated later. All right, the process of retrieving data from a file is known as reading data from a file. When a piece of data is read from a file, it copies it into, uh, from the file into RAM, uh, into the RAM, all right? So an input file is a file that data is read from, all right? An output file is a file that data is written to, all right? But well, we'll look at that. So it tells us this. We, we know that information is, is stored on, on disk or whatnot. Now, this is a, 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 our, a, like a CD. And what happens is the data is uh, randomly stored on, on this, in cylinders on the CD. So what happens in the circular motion data is stored around this disk, right? But now we have like the jump drives, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, SD, the, the SD cards, et cetera. So data is not stored in pretty much in this fashion anymore, all right? Which then makes it uh, a, a, a quicker to access and to process, all right? So reading data from a file, all right? So this data is stored at this address, this data is that address, that data is that address. So what? When you, when you access, access that variable, it can pull that data and give you that information, all right? Now, it says, uh, when a file is used by a program, three steps must be taking place, all right? Must take place. You must open a file, all right? That file must have a physical file name attached to it because when you want to use a file, the system has to know what file name to, to use or to open. Kind of like what you use in Microsoft Word. If I give you a, a, a jump drive with five different files on it, and I tell you to modify uh, in, a, in a file called, on there called, uh, called uh, classwork, if I say modify the data or the information in classwork, well, you have to take that, that jump drive, put it in your computer, and do what? open it before you able to make any kind of accident, you know, make, make any kind of changes to it. Same thing with programming. <clears throat> with programming, in order for me to either read from, write to a file, I have to, first of all, have access to it, and then I have to open it, right? right. Then, okay, it's open, I can do two things. I could just simply read from it and take that data and do whatever and write to another file, or I can read from it and write back to that same file, or I can, I can read from it, process the data and shoot out output, or just read the data and print it and then close the file, all right? So two types of file types, like we said, we just talked about, uh, they got sequential files and random access, and access files. Now, how many uh, of you have, have ever uh, used of uh, seeing a cassette tape. A cassette tape, tape is a good example of sequential access. Why is that? 
Because with a cassette tape, if I have a cassette tape and it's rewound to the beginning of the tape, and I have, say, five or six songs, say I have 10 songs on one side of that tape, and I want to get to the fifth song, I have to what? Fast forward through each and every song till I get to the fifth song. I cannot jump just to the fifth song. That's sequential access. I have to go each individual step to get to it. Sequential access is the same fashion. You have to read, 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 read till you get to it, right? So when you work with sequential files, you access data from the beginning of the file to the end of the file, okay? If you want to read a piece of data that is stored at the very uh, end of the file, you have to read every single file till you get to that last one, all right? And like I say, it did, and it said something like a cassette tape. Then you have random access files, all right, which are known as direct access files. In this fashion, uh, data can be randomly selected or chosen. I'll give you an example. When we have a CD player or a CD, we do, unlike the cassette tape with a CD, we don't have to go what from the first, excuse me, the first uh, song to the sixth song. What we can do, we can randomly jump from one song to the next. That can be done with a, uh, with, a with cassette tapes. Okay, because so it, even even with a CD, you can do a random play, and it might play the first song, then it might play the fifth song, then it might play the eighth song, then it might play the third song, then it might play the uh, fourth song. So with a CD, you can ran, you can you have random access, all right? So this chapter focuses on sequential files, all right? And when we talk about sequential files, we're going to read whatever file you read at that time. That day, that's what a, a file marker is. You read again, it moves to the next one. You read again, it moves to the next one, again, until it gets to the end, all right? So uh, here we go. In order to do that, all right, and this is just telling you these file types. You got a .jpg, that's an image file. we well, based on the extension. .txt, that's normally a text file, all right? Then you got .doc, normally that's a document file, like a Word document, et cetera, all right? Not necessarily, but, you know, it could be. Now, files on a disk are identified by what? It's file name. And we should know that uh, when we when we write our file, when we create our C++ files, we have to save them with a what? A file name. Now, the extension itself sometimes come along with the software, but many times you can force an extension or sometimes you cannot even have an extension at all. But the extension is a part of the file name, right? So, for example, when you create a document with, with, a, with a word processor, all right, and then save the document in a file, you have to specify a file name. The extension is normally defaulted with that application, all right? But um, you can change it, but then the, the system, uh, depending on what type of system you're on, depending on what software you're using, it can be confusing in that if I don't, if it doesn't see a .doc at the end, it might not know it's a Word document, but it just simply mean that you what uh, you didn't put that DLC or you changed the name from the .dot DLC. All right. So and then some software would say, ah, a violation. I only can recognize files with .dot DLC. Anything other than that, I'm thinking it's a problem with it. So you you know you got those two different ways where files can be recognized on the system. All right. So um. Each operating system has its own rule for rules for naming files, all right? Because I'm back in the day, DOS before before the Windows, you had to have a file name with no space, and then if you had an extension dot, and then only three letters. Now you can have spaces, you can have parentheses, you can have uh, uh, what else? Dot whatever, dot whatever, multiple dots in it. So things like that. It kind of evolved over time, all right? 
But you want to try to stay standard because when you start reading data from a file, you know, you want to make sure it, it, uh, it can go through all platforms, all right? So it tells us that uh, <clears throat> it turns, uh, we have a file name and then most often times it's preceded by a dot and then maybe the uh, extension, the three letters or whatnot, all right? Dot JPG, a graphics, dot TXT could be a, dot, uh, a text file, dot DLC could be a Word document or whatnot. The extensions usually uh, uh, indicate the type of data stored in the file, right? But that's not necessarily true. I could take a file called resume.doc and rename it to resume.jpg. Is it a, a image file? No, it's just that I renamed it to that, right? So you gotta, sometimes you gotta be aware of that too, right? Now, uh, it says in order uh, for a program to work with a file, on your computer's disk, the computer must create a file stream object. You got to, that's, that's the first, well, not the first thing, because you got to load the header file. A file stream object. A file stream object is an object that is associated with a specific file that provides a way for the programmer to work with that file, right? It is called a stream object because the file can be thought of as a stream of data. All right, let me let me change this to uh, continuous real quick uh, display. What's the right. so now okay here. So what happens? Right? It tells us when we have a file stream object. It works like the CN and it takes the place of the CN. And then if we have a for input file, for output file objects, it takes the place of the C out, all right? So setting up a program for a, a file input output, you must first have the pound include F stream library loaded. If not, then you run into issues, run into major issues. All right, kind of like using string without loading the string library. It says the F stream header file defines the data types OF stream, and that's for output files, IF stream, that's for input file, and just F stream. Just F stream gives you an option later on to use flags to tell whether the file that you're opening is for input or output, or a boat or a pending or whatnot. All right, but if I see OF stream and an object, that file is only for output. If I, oh, that object is only for output. If I see IF stream and an object, that object can only be used for input, all right? So you gotta, gotta remember that, and we'll look at that in a, in a, in a bit. Before C++ can work with, uh, can work with a, a file, it must uh, define the object of one of these types, right? So like I say, you got the OF stream for output, IF stream for input, and just the F stream where you can later on determine whether or not it's for input, output, or both, all right? So now, once you create the object, now you have to associate that object with a, well, with a file that you're gonna open, all right? So look, first of all, you have to have Pound include F stream at the top of your program. Then when I create an object, I F stream input file, all right? That's gonna be my object. I, I F stream says it's an object for what? For reading in data from a file. Now, at this point, we don't know what file we are working with. But when I get to this line, in file, input file dot open, this would be the file at this time that I'm working with, all right? Because I could close this file and reopen uh, 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 another file and, and use it for input. So uh, that's how you would open it, all right? So the following code, okay, open the file for uh, writing data to a file. OF stream, out file, out file is an object so that I can write data to a file. What file I'm writing it to, I have to open it first and I'm gonna write it to employees.txt, 
Okay? Now, if you wanted to read from a, 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 a file in a particular location on your computer, this says, okay, C colon, the backslash backslash, which is the double backslash, takes away one and says, okay, I'm going into the data folder, backslash backslash. Okay, it's, remember, remember we talked about those escape sequences and then certain characters can't be, can't be uh, printed or seen unless you use a backslash. So backslash says, okay, backslash, and then, oh, this is a backslash. So inventory.txt. So data, and then uh, in that data folder on the C drive uh, should be a file called inventory.txt. All right. So now, so let's look at a program. So let's go here. So yeah, let's open this. Let's open this. Let's take this out. All right. So say we take this out. So what we'll do, and we want to, we don't need all this though, but I'll leave it in there. We want to read data from a file. I'll say include and then uh, F stream. All right. So now, so here I can do I F stream. All right. And now I need to give it an object. What's a, uh, what's a valid object? A valid object, just like a valid variable name. Anything that doesn't, be, doesn't uh, uh, have spaces in it, all right, doesn't begin with a number and doesn't have special characters. So I could say uh, my input, all right? One semicolon. All right, so all of a sudden I've created an a input uh, file object called my input, all right? So now, when I want to use uh, or read data from my input, first of all, too, I need to know what type of data I want to read, all right? So say I want to read in a string, all right? I'll give it name. I want to read in a, let me look at this right quick, see what I have here. Where's my index? I think I have a file called index. Yeah, here. Yeah. All right. So here, I'm reading in a name, a number, an integer, and a number of float. So if I go back to the program, and the file call is called index.txt. So I could go back here. Okay, I need a string variable. All right, I need a uh, an int variable, and I'll just say number, and I need a float variable and I'll say amount, all right? So I'm reading in those, all right? So now what I can do here, I can say, okay, uh, well, it, we didn't get to it. Uh, I could do something like say, uh, if, it, if it's 10 records, for int x equals zero, x, and I, that, I can do this because I know it's 10 records, x less than 10, x plus plus. All right, now I could read till the end of file. And what I can do here, I can do something like what? CN? No, I wouldn't use CN because what I said I wanted to do? Read from an input file, all right? But uh, before I read from that input file, I need to what? Open it. So I need to do something like this. I need to do my input all right, dot open, and what's my file name? Index.txt, all right? So now my file index.txt is available for use because I've, I've associated the uh, object, the stream object with that file. And in here, I want you to see out, because if I'm do see out, I'm reading from what? The keyboard, okay? so. Now, so I would do uh, my file. Anytime I want to read from the file, I can do my file or my input, my phone, and I can stream name, I could stream number, and I can stream, uh, uh, I'll spell that wrong, amount. Okay, and I'll spell it. Uh, uh, so what happens, this is going to loop 10 times, all right? So what, what happens is, when I open the file, 
my read marker is here. I'm going to read name, uh, number, and amount as the first time. Then my file marker is going to be here. I read another one. My file, file marker gets here. Read another one. File marker is here. Read another one. So see what happens? We, we process in this using what? A sequential file access, right? Line by line by line by line by line, right? So if I go back to the source program, when I read the data, now I can do a C out uh, name, number, and I need to put some spaces in here, amount. All right, in line. All right, so I'll do something like uh, left. I'll do slash T. Then I'll say and set W. And this is just trying to set it up to where. Uh, it has some spaces in it. I'll say 12 here. Okay, and then I forgot my purpose. All right, okay. Then I can do uh, right W. Uh, just set everything to 12. Oh no, name should be here. Okay. Then my number gonna be to the right and then I'll do uh, set W 12 again, all right? All right, so that'll print that. So now, if I run this, watch what happens. Debug, because uh, I've already read it. Hopefully no errors. See what happened? It pulled that data without me having to type anything. But I, I need to add something before, uh, for, for good housekeeping, I'll, get, I'll, get, I'll do, uh, anytime you open a file, it's good practice to do a close. All right. So now I closed it. So what happened? I opened it to use. Now I close it. And the reason being, when you working individually, independently on your own system, you may not have issues. But uh, when you start working in a larger environment. And you got files that you that's being shared or whatnot. If you never release that file back, then a person will never gain be able to gain access to it because you hold the control over that file. So those are some of the things that you're gonna learn as you program. So I'll run it again and uh, we'll see what happens. Like I say, all the information is what in this file, it's like this. All right, I previously typed it or somebody could have given me that file. I could have downloaded that file, all right? So now when I run it or debug it, uh, what happens, boom. See what happens? It automatically executes the program. I didn't have to do anything or whatever. So it's like, now you can write code against data that's already can be that already can be accepted and process it and do whatever, search it, sort it, do whatever, and you're finished. All right. So this is how the way we're gonna be trying to go to, you know, really in programming. You don't want a user to keep having the input data, okay, process based on this. No. And if you look at it, even with your information at school, the first pretty much you you uh you apply for, for admission. That, and, and you got to fill out a form. That information is inputted into the system. That information is validated or verified, and you get confirmation that you are, you can are accepted into the school. Then you are given a 
L number and an email address that's associated with that record. Then you uh, register for classes. So now you register for classes, then now that information is there and associated with you. So, and then, so what? When you, when you go to a particular department, whether you, you go to be advised or what not, what they'll say, okay, what is your L number? Type in your L number and what? Boom, all that information pops up. So see how, like I say, the, the, the goal, you know, you want to be able to input data, but pretty much the goal is to be able to take data that's already there and manipulate that data and, and you see how fast you can, it, it can be manipulated and actually processed to do whatever you need to do with it. So this is uh, the goal we're getting to. But like I say, if you can read data, good. Now, I'll show you something. Uh, we read all the data. Uh, and like I say, there's an, another way. If I can get out of this. Okay. All right. So here, IF stream, we read our file. Or stream. Now, if we wanted to write this data to a file, now I'll show you something. Uh, go back and here, uh, go back to the source. We go here and let's create an output file. And I'll say, OF stream my output, All right? We just created something similar, my output. So now I need to create a file that's associated with that object, that stream object. So what I can do is my output, right? dot open and I can give it any name. My output put file if, if not already created will be created. Okay. That's some things we're gonna have to work with or understand about that later on when we get to 194. So I can give this any valid name I want to. So in double quotes I could say uh Hello. I'll say true data dot uh, DAT, all right? So I'll say true data dot DAT. So th that's the file it will create, all right? It will create that file. Where will it create it here? Within my, my uh, folder for my project. So now I can't just do this and it's going to work. Now, remember I told you, the uh, IF stream work with CN. So I replace the CN here with my input. Now I'm gonna replace the C out with uh, my output. So all of a sudden now, everything that was coming to the, to the screen is now gonna go where? To this particular file called true data uh, dot txt. But then what? Once we finish with the file, we want to close it. All right? For safe housekeeping. So now when I run it, what's going to come on my screen? I won't get anything on the screen. Because what? I'm not right. I'm not see out in anything to the screen. So watch what happens. See what happened? Nothing happened. So Normally what programmers do, and I'll do it after I show you, they'll put a message in here saying program has ended. So they'll know that the program has ended somewhere here or here. So let's say we go back and let's see where's our file. Where's our file? Look, where, let's see that. Not, nah, come on, I know, I, know, I know it created it. Let's see where it is. Oh, here we go. No, no, that's close that down. What did I call it? True data dot txt. I mean dot dat. Uh, where's true data? Nah, I know true data should be somewhere here. And I don't see it. This is score data. That's not the one. It's true data. And why am I not seeing it in here? Oh, I know. I think I know why. No, I still don't see it. 
Run through that. Okay, source. My data, my, my, my output is true data, open my output. And let me do this. Uh, But I'm, I, I gotta find that file. Let me see some. Let me build it, uh, debug it. Okay, program has ended. And normally, what it do? I'm about to. I'm about to look for it. All right, program has ended. So what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go try to find where it's located at. So where's my drive? Where is this located at? Let's see. Uh, I'll save as. Let's see where it's putting it. Repo. Okay, let me, let me check this. Uh, This computer. Save it. Where is it? Source. Repo. What's it called? Homework. Homework. And it should be. It's not in here. Oh, let me see all oh, for... All right, look here. I don't know why it's not showing in uh, there, but watch what happened when I, I'm gonna try to open it. Nah, what I wanna do, no, 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 no. I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna cancel this. Cancel it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go to it from here. All right, so I'm gonna go to it from here. User, here, source, here, homework, uh, homework. All right, so let's write, I'm gonna right click and then I'm gonna, uh, well, I'll double click, let me double click on it. I'm open it in Notepad. All right, we'll take that off. All right, so see here, this is the file. I should have been able to see it. I probably should have called it .txt, but still, this is the same output. If I if I would run this and take uh take this off and put C out, if I take this off and put C out and run it, it's, it's going to be the identical or the exact same thing. All right, so I have this and watch, and I'll open this. And so, uh, see what happens? I have the exact same thing, all right, in the exact same order, in the exact same columns and whatever. So it created that file for me without me having to uh, try to take something and try to cut and paste or whatever. It put all that information in that file. All right, and I could put whatever I want in that file, just like I could write anything I want to the screen. All right, because I could even uh, where I got uh, in the program in here, I could say uh, my my output rather than rather than see out, and it'll put that at the bottom of the screen in this file. All right, so that's how you would write uh, to the screen. So now I'll show you. Uh, so that's input. You got F stream. You got your object you created. My uh, my input semicolon just a name. Output stream created. My output. I open the file. My input dot open, and then there's the file it reads from. My output dot open. This is the one it's actually writing to. All right. So um. All right. 
So also closing the file. Remember, we talked about that. It's important. Make sure you close the file so that what? It can be available for others to use. All right. So like I say, you don't have any issues now being that uh you working on your your, your system by yourself or you're not in a multi uh, user environment, all right? There's no problem. All right, close this cause the file uh causes any unsaved data that may be still uh, may, may still be held in the buffer to be saved in the file. Close it out, boom, it's done. This means that the data uh will be in the file if you need to read. Uh, it later in uh, uh, in the same program. So, like I say, this is the information. And watch, I can even show you to where, if I go back to the program uh, here, and where I say, say if I see out number uh, divided by divided by two, right? So. What happens is, you know we have these numbers in here, right? Numbers. But they're going to take these numbers here and divide it by two, right? So let's go back and run that program. Let me change the name, see if it does any different. But it, not, it, didn't, it, wasn't, shouldn't, have, it shouldn't have did that. I'll say... value.txt, um, see if it'll put it in here. But it might not be covered on this. Let's see, take, I don't want to take out, what I want to take out. I'll take this out. Take data, take that out. All right, so now let's go back here and run this debug. Can I debug it? Yeah. All right, so look what happened. See my numbers, what happened? Rather than give me the same numbers this time, this is my input. Well, where is it? Index. All right, so this is my uh, uh, data that I'm reading from. One nine, one nine six two divided by two, that's it. This number divided by two, that's it. So what happened? It read this information, processed it, and then gave me this output. All right, so see, it read from a file, <clears throat> did some processing, and printed out the data, all right? So that's how data files work, you know? But like I said, I still don't see the file. What did I call it? You know, but it should have been, normally it would be in that, in, in the listed up here once it's created. And I call it value.txt, and I don't see none of it in here. I don't even see value, but I know it's in my uh, folder, all right? So now, um, back to the notes, all right? So that's closing the files, all right? Writing data to a file, see, uh, this is, uh, rather than using C out, we use what? The file object. So I could write this information to a program, to a file, but provided that this is my file object. I could write the word price, colon, space, and then the actual price to an output file if that's uh, if that's the object file object. All right. So look here at a program. Somewhat what we did, but we we did we well it, it, we didn't actually give it uh, values. We read from a file. This is writing Bach, Beethoven, Mozart, and Schubert all to a file. All right. What's the file name it's writing to? demo file.txt, all right? What's my file object? Out, file, output file, all right? So what happens is you have to have F stream. What happens? I created my file object, all right? When I did it on the outside of here, that just made it global. When, I, when they do it here, that makes it local to the main, all right? But then here I'll do what? Output file dot open and give it the uh, actual physical file that I'm going to be writing to. And anytime I want to write to this file, I have to use output file. So output file box. So box is being written, new line. Output file Beethoven, new line, written. Output file Mozart, written. Output file Schubert, 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 new line. 
So each one of these na uh, uh, names is going to be written to the file, each in a new line. And then what? Output file dot close, closing out the file. And then they just printed something to the screen, see how done, saying that, hey, it did get to the end, it's finished, and that, that's my program, All right? So see here, the now writing was from here, see how now writing data to file as to the screen. And all that is is showing you in different places where the program has gotten to. And look, this would be your output file, Bach, Beethoven, Mozart, and Schubert, all right? So that's all that would be written to that file, all right? Now, um, and basically the same thing, like I say, you just rewrite, writing it, uh, each one, but this would be what? You don't have a new line, you don't have a new line, even a space, you don't have a new line, you don't have a new line. Even though it looked like output file by output file Beethoven, output file Mozart, output file, Sch file Schubert, like, oh, well, look, I got different output files. No, but they all will be what? Written all together on one line. Because just like you write, it writes out to your screen, that's how it would write out to that file. Okay? Same exact way. All right? So, and looking at this one, it, it just showing uh, it, this program, right, user input to a file. Right? So, I could do that too. So let's let's say we we want to do that. We'll go here and we'll uh can I pull in the program? Do I have a program? Yeah, what I'll do rather than write something, well, well, I'll just write it. All right. So I'll just leave that up there. I'll leave string down there. I'll do something like uh see how. Input your name. I'll do CN and uh, I'll just do CN name, being that uh, I'm not going to uh, enter a multiple, a, a two, a, a name with a space in it. C out. Well, go away. Enter your wage, all right? And then I'll use amount, all right? And then CN, CN amount. So now, once I do that, I can take those two values and I can output them to the, that file called value.txt. I can't output them to this file because uh, that's an input file. It's, it, it's an IF stream. So now I could say uh, uh, my output, my output, all right? And just like I'm writing it, I'll do this, uh, T, uh, name, and I'll say name, uh, Name. I'll just do this. Uh, and uh, a mo. Huh? All right. So now, so let's run this, and I'll just put the end of program. See out. Oh, I took out my uh, clue. All right. Okay. So what I can do here is um, my input close my output. Okay. See. Close. All right. So now. Have this program, let's run it. I think I, I don't think I have errors in it. Uh, okay, okay. I'll do it. 
So now it's gonna prompt me because I got C out, right? If it come, oh, look at the dollar here. All right, so here, look, enter your name. Now that's because, what did I say? No, input your name. That's because it's what? It's saying C out, right? So all I have to do now is put in the name, all right? If I say, uh, all right? Now, in a wage, oh, I didn't even do that right, but I'll, I'll, uh, in a wage, I'll say, all right, just a number. And look, program has ended, right? Because what? After that, I just said what? Stream it to what? My output file object, but not to the screen. So I'll have to go here, not here, uh, where's the, uh, I'd have to go here and I have to go to this folder here where it's at, if I can get back to it. Go back to this folder, look at value, and look, name, David, amount, what? 8223, which was the amounts that we put in. All right, and then we look at here, look. In a, uh, input your name, David, in an amount, 8228. Is inputted. So what? And then my output file, well, my op output object said to send it to the file. And notice what? Nothing was sent back to the screen. It was sent back to this file in the same format. Two lines, two, or new line, new line, then new line, and then output name, David, amount, 82, 30, 28, and then new line, new line. All right? So that's the output. And if I click here, it, uh, well, you got, well, new line leaves here and then go here for one line. All right. So, so I can read from the screen and write to the file. All right. Read from the file and write to the file, you know, because I have my inputs and whatnot. All right. So, um, so that's basically somewhat what they were saying here. I could read in a number, read in another number, read in a third number, and then write those numbers to a file, right? Because I have my output file object created, all right? And that, then those numbers are written to the file, all right? So, and like I said, we got input file, output file. Now, this is CN, this read the number again, all right? Name one, name two, name three. But name one, name two, and name three are string variables, all right? So it read in those strings and it write those strings out. The other one was numbers. This one is uh, string values, all right? Now, <clears throat> questions about data files, anybody? Questions about how the data file works? And like I say, it can be uh, confusing. You can run into issues because your data, your, uh, your input statement, where you read from that object, using that object, the variables have to match the values that you're reading in. Kind of like when we talked about when you, if you tried to see in three different values at one time and you did a, 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 a int float in a char, but then somebody typed in a float int in a char. The, it, it, what, what happened is the same thing with reading from a file. If you did it backwards, It'll take the first part of that that uh, float as the int. Then it'll take the uh, the float part, the dot whatever, and make it the float input. And then the uh, then your number gonna be uh, the uh, the actual va uh, uh, character that you thought you were trying to input, because a character uh, number can be considered character data. All right, so. And this just giving us the same thing, uh, input name. That means you want to read name from that input file, all right? So see here, input file name, you're reading in that name. See out name, you read it in from the, from the, uh, from the program, and then you're just reading it out to the screen. Reading it in from that file, and then you're writing it out to the screen. Reading it in from the file, writing it out to the screen, all right? So, somebody may ask, uh, let's go back to uh, this. 
Somebody may ask the question of, uh, let me undo this till I get to where I want to get to that for loop. Somebody may ask the question, well, Mr. Vesta, if I have uh, more, more records than I, than I am processing, right? Like I say, normally, hopefully you, 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 you don't ever want that, you know, because you always want to process your entire, uh, your entire uh, data collection, uh, you know, the collection of data. But example, we read here what? From zero to less than 10. That's 10 times. But if I do this, less than five, there's no problem because what's gonna happen is gonna say, okay, I'm gonna read the first record, read the second one, read the third one, read the fourth one, read the fifth one, and then what? I'm finished, all right? So as no, long as it's less than, you don't have an issue. If you go beyond, that's when you can run into end of file errors, all right? So let's run this one that has less, uh, that's reading a uh, less number of records, uh, 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 not reading a complete uh, uh, list of records. So see what happened? It's gonna do them. It'll do those five records, hey, I did it. But what? I have other records that I didn't uh, review or process, all right? So you gotta watch that. Uh, now, say we change this to 15, all right? All of a sudden now, we're gonna run into some issues where we're trying to do something and we don't have enough information. All right, so see what happens? It's stuck on the last record over and over and over and over. Some compiler is going to give you an error because you didn't pass that flag point. But look what happened. It did this record until it got to 15, which is false. Because if I was trying to do a, a summation of all these values, then I've just added this value one, two, three, four, five, six times when it should only be added what? One time. Okay? So you, you got to watch that. All right? So that's something you got to watch. But there's there's uh there's ways to uh accommodate for that. All right. So now it said what? Reading data from a file, we did, you know, we read from a file. All right, the position. Okay, it read the first one. All right. And we'll say, no, no, no. That's this is actually printing it out. But like say this new line, this new line, this new line. So that's how it actually stored the information into it. I wrote this one, new line. So it's like it's just stringing it along. We don't, we look at it like, okay, the first name, new line, second, the next name, new line, next. But the computer just put it in a continuous fashion. All right? So, but you read position. You start with the first record, and then you start reading the second record and the third record. And they normally would be what? Each on a new line. All right? Or separated by space. All right? So it tells us, keep in mind that the, the this stream operator extracts data from a file. It, 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 accept, it accepts, uh, it expects to read pieces of data that are separated by a white space, normally a, a space bar or whatnot, or a hard return or whatnot, all right? So when it hit that white space, which is a hard return or a space bar, it says, okay, I'm finished reading it. Okay, next time I hit a read, read the next one. Oh, I hit the end. Next one, read the next one. So that's actually how it works. And then it moves to the next one each the individual time it reads, okay? Reading numeric data from a text file, we did that. We read the data, you know, we set something to end and we read from it. See, in file value one, value two, value three. We read in what? Score, with it, uh, year, uh, age, and uh, 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 what an age, something in amount, number, and we read amount. So we can read in numeric data, all right? Um, here, this is what I was telling you about uh, what you can use to combat uh, that issue where you're talking about going beyond the number, all right? Using a loop to process files. So look here, what we did, we used the for loop because what? We knew the number. All right, we didn't, we knew the number that we was reading from, but they're not actually reading, they're writing, but it's still processing that loop, what, 
zero to whatever number of days times, all right? All right. Now, um, detecting the end of file, here we go. Now, look at this uh, example. This says while input file, that says as long as it's true, as long as there's data, read in the data. I could change my file to do the same thing. What, I, what you do, you'll put this into the thing to input and the end of the input. And then there's uh, also other ways to do it, all right? Where you would do uh, if input and then while wow, whatever, then do that. So what happens here is, okay, if it's input, if, it's a, if, it's, if that file can be found, and if that file is open, while wow, this, and you're doing the exact same thing, all right? Um, otherwise, you could print out an error that that file not found. So that's that's what it's doing. If it if it exists, you just you will fall in this loop and read until the uh and read the number. If it read that first number, and they can say oh, and then stay in here and read read the numbers until you finish. Otherwise, if you didn't find if this file was not there, then it'll fall here and say oh. No, can't see it, can't read it. We have some type of error, all right? So what happens, uh, this can be modified here in this part here, where you can put that while. And what you do is while, and whatever the uh, name of the file, while uh, my output, by the type, while my output, and then we we'll just take all of this. Off. Well, I can't. I ain't gonna take it off. I'll just take this off. Uh, cut this and put this here. Uh, paste and then change this to this. So all it's saying is, while this is available, read those num. Read name number amount. Output, rename them on my output, rename them on my output, rename them on my output. So that means what? Whether we got five, 200, 2000, whatever is going to read to the end of the file. So we don't have to really know what the end of the file is. So watch when we run it. Remember last time it did 15. See? Got to the last one, stop. So watch. We have this. Now, if I go back to index, so if I go to index and I'll say, okay, Mary, okay, and I'll say, all right, then I'll say Bill. And I don't have to go back and try to count how many, whatever. Watch what happened when I run the program. See, it automatically did them. So as you build on your, your file, your, your, your code worked to where what? No matter how many records you have, it's done. You can even delete one. If you delete one, all right, or whatever, or two or whatever. Uh, so if I go here in this file here and I'll take all of this and take this out, all right? Take it out and then I'll go back to here and then I'll go to debug and I'll run it. See what I'm saying? It doesn't matter. So as your file grow or, or shrink, it knows where every file has an end of file marker. How many people have ever had a file and for whatever reason, say the lights cut off or your file was trying to write, it was being write, written to the disk and you pulled it out too fast and when you tried to access the file that it was writing, it said uh, no in the file mark encounter or no in the file encounter. Because as it was writing, it never got to finish writing that file to, and, and the, to let the system know, start reading this file from here and oh, stop right here. So what happens is every file has a that starting point and an in the file marker. So it knows what where that in the file market is, and it'll stop. All right. Um, so, and we're talking about in the file. I think the next option, well, it gives you another option. 
it'll say if input file fail, then error. But then what? Go it on and what? You can read, print, read, print, read, print, read, print, read, print. But this is good to use because sometimes uh, students don't use it, either that one or this one. You know, but this one is a little shorter. Sometimes students don't use this. And when they when they write code dealing with a data file, it's like, well, Mr. Mess, I don't know what my program is doing. I don't know why, whatever. But if they would have used something like this, they would have found that, oh, error. It would have said something like error opening file. Then you know that what? You either can't see the file, file wasn't open, file wasn't uh, uh, um, the object and everything was not um, set up. So you, you go back and make the mod correct modifications. All right. So, um, Hello. No one is so here again, basically the same thing. If this, okay, if it's, if it's not else, Okay, you have an error. Okay, but otherwise, you wanna you gonna start reading in the numbers. Read, write them out. Read, write them out. Read, write them out. All right. So that's all that's saying. So uh, in hours, if we do this, uh, let me close this up. All right. If I go back here in the same program, uh, let me let me undo this. Uh, okay, undo, 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 undo. All right. All right, so we leave it at this. Is that right? I mean, I'm doing right. So we leave it at this. So if this, we are gonna do that. All right, and watch. Else, and you can put your own error message. Else, uh, what happened here? Okay, I said. Oh, this is a while. Yeah, that's why. If all right, if that, and then I could say one. Well, no, I don't need the one. All right, uh, let them bump, bump, bump. and then else. All right, else. Uh, I think I have something, um, oh, semicolon. All right, so why? Let me see. All right, so if I run it now, it should give me what I asked for. If this, it doesn't, if I have everything set, then it's gonna do the my file, it's gonna output whatever. So I run it and it should give me my output, those two records. Uh oh, gave me the one record. So, uh, that's because let's see, data uh, my file, data file, input file, not double index here. Because I'm doing uh, once I got to the end, read that one, read that one, they say, Oh, I'm at the end, I think. So let's say debug. Uh, no, 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 wait, something going on. Okay. Oh, I don't have the wow. It just did it one time, that's why. Uh, that's why, one time. Because I didn't put wow. So it will do the one. Okay. Okay. Wow, that. And it just gonna do that. Uh I can put my curly braces, which I tell you to do all the time. You know, because you never know. Uh, all right. So now let me go back to here. I'm not here. Input, uh, not input index. All right. So now when I go back to source, now we have our if. If this is true, we're going to wow, wow, input. Keep on input. Stay in this loop. We know that we got the file. So now we're going to stay in this while loop till we read everything and write it out. If not, we're going to do cannot find data file. So debug, and I should get my two records because it's going to stay in the loop. So see, it stayed in the loop. Now, watch this. Watch if I change this file name now. Uh, 
uh, one. No, I'll do this. Uh, can I do output? I'm going to get an error. I'm going to get an error. See, that's on input. Oh, input. Yeah, I'm doing output. I'm going to change this to one. So watch. That going to cause this to have an error. So when it's the while, oh no, that should be input. Huh. Input. So it's checking to see if the input file is done. All right. So I'll take this off because output was there. So it didn't matter. So this is going to run like we want it. All right. Checking to see if the input file is there. It's going to run. It's going to give us the output. All right. So now we're going to check, take this off. If, well, we're going to say, we're going to change the name of this file to in, in, index1.txt. But we have our name. Our name is valid. Our name is valid here. But does this file exist? Can the program see that file? So let's debug it. See? Well, did it give me my error message? I did see how else this, this cannot, whatever. So why did it give it to me? Uh, if this, else this, and then close. Should you have C outed on the else? Oh, yeah, man, you're right. Thank you, ma'am. See welcome. out. Yeah, I had just uh, the, uh, the string. So I needed to see out. So debug. And now, being that the name is different from, see, cannot find a data file, all right? So, like I say, it's good to use that because otherwise what? You'll just get nothing and you're like, okay, what's wrong with my program? I don't see no errors. But if you if you put that while you're checking to see if that input file object has been uh, defined right, then, then you can find, you can kind of eliminate error. So now I took it back off. Now I took it off. It's going to check to see if my input is there, if index.txt is there, and then it should give me my two uh, records of output. See? So I got my record. So like I say, it's up to you. Like I say, but most times you want to put that in to, for checking just to make sure uh, when you're writing code, you don't stay uh, on one, one little process over and over and don't, and don't move on to do what you need to do, all right? So um, using the uh, C string, all right? But um, I've never, we never used this as often, but let's look at it. In the older version of C++ language, prior to C++ 11, a file stream object object open member function uh, will, will not accept a string object, but we know we can we can do string objects now. All right, so, uh, subject as arguments. The open member uh, function requires that you pass the name uh, of that file as a null terminator string. All right, so I'm not gonna confuse you with that. We know we can pass strings and get our value. So don't worry about this, all right? So don't worry about that. All right. So now, uh, breaking the loop, you can use the break command. You know, if you don't went uh, so many times and break, you know, if you find out that I, I went through a loop and I went X number of times, break out. Sometimes this is good when you could, you know, when you actually uh, uh, troubleshooting this stuff. All right. But you can use it in a program also. When something you know is you know you wanted to do so many times and then break out, but like I say, a lot of time when you're troubleshooting and you got something going through a loop, you might put a if statement. Okay, uh, if x get if x is equal to ten, then break out, so I can look and see exactly what what and and maybe print some values out and then break out when x is ten. So I'm saying it gives you a good option to uh, uh, to uh, to debug your program. But you can use it to code. Because look here, uh, in, in this program, what they're doing is input a value, all right? 
the input of value, the program will raise the value. So what they using uh, to the power, all right? So for count equals zero, count less than 10 or less than or equal to 10. So they going from what? Zero to 10. So how many times is performed going through that loop? 11. 11 times. That's from zero to less than or equal to 10. That's 11 times. So raise the power. Okay, count, and then what it does, it does the power function of value. What? Whatever value you put in, when uh, raised to the zero power, it's going to give a value. That value raised to the one power will give you one. That value raised to the second power, then the third, then the fourth, then the fifth, then the sixth, then the seventh, then the eighth, then the ninth, then the tenth. All right? So uh, let's see. It, well, it's going to perform this. But then it's going to uh, say input choice, all right? If choice is Q, then break, all right? So what? You didn't have to have while, while, is, while is equal to Q or equal to small Q. You performing it 10 times, and then uh, you got down here, you know, uh, continue, you know. So it's, And all this is in that for loop now. So the first time it's going to go through, it's going to do for uh, zero, the value to the zero power, right? Then it's going to ask you if you want to continue, right? You're in a choice, you put in Q, it's going to break. Anything other than Q is going to what? It's going to continue on going through until it reach what? 10 and do 10 and exit out. So like uh, rather than staying in a loop for 20, 30 times, you know, you might have a, have a uh, option to where you can break on out at any time you want and you want to break out. All right. So look, it went what? It went one, or we did the one to one to the zero power, one to the first power. Is that no? Is that one? Let's see. Oh, here we go. Two raised to the zero, two raised to the one, and then two squared, and then on that next time they quit. All right. They did a quit Q and got out of it, all right? So as long as they didn't do a Q, it just kept on going. But they put the Q in at any time in that a loop to kick them out because they might, might have not have wanted to go through that many times, all right? So like I say, so that's the break, you know? So that the break command, it can come in handy for you, whatever. And then now they use the break um, in a nested loop showing you how you can actually print. Notice there's no inline until it got here, all right? But when it's equal to 10, break. So it printed this out 10 time break. And then next row, print 10 time break. Next row, 10 times break, all right? Till it got to the end. So it, it did this five, well, no, not five. Uh, this say less than 20, but this say if it's 10, break, all right? So uh, really the stars is uh, short. So for five times, for a star equals zero, star less than 20, it's gonna start here if star is uh, equal to 10. So rather than go to 20, it went to 10 and broke out, All right? So this says do it to 20. This says what? When it's equal to 10, break, all right? So that's why it didn't print out 20 of them because it broke at what? One, two, three, four, five, 10, kick out. Then it went to, uh, this went to one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10 break. Then it went to uh, two, which is this line. Then three, this line, then four, this line, and kicked out, all right? So that's why uh, it did that on that one. There's a continuous statement. The continuous statement causes the current iteration of a loop to end immediately, all right? When continue is uh, encountered, all statements in the body of the loop that appears after will not be executed. It ignores, it just kicks on out of the loop, all right? So it's, it, it's, a, it's a little different between the break. The break still did the what? The, uh, in, the uh, C out of, a, of an end line to go to what? A new line. But if this was a continue, that continue would have kicked on out that first time and uh, it only printed uh, one line of a, uh, well, of this, all right? So, um, so the continue of what's encountered in, a, in the body of that loop, all right? So look at this, uh, what happens here, uh, while 
while uh, test valve plus plus less than 10. Now, you got to remember, remember pre and post? So at the time, the first time it checked test valve, what is the value of test valve? It's zero. Remember, it will, perform, it will process, it will process the statement. Then it will increment when it gets to the next one. All right. So it'll process it as zero. Is zero less than 10? Yes. All right. Then if true val is, is equal to four, no, it's not. You know what I'm saying? So it's gonna continue on. So only when it's equal to four, it should uh, see out test val, all right? If no continue, kicks out. So see here, look what happened. It did not print what? The actual, uh, the test val at when it was four. So it kicked on out, went back to this, this loop here, and continue. So anything you had beneath this, it would ignore altogether. All right, anything beneath the, uh, uh, that that statement, but then it'll go back up here and process. So that's why I didn't print what the C out of the four. All right, when uh, test valve was four. All right, and notice what happened. It tested at zero, but it output of what one because once it left this line, test valve became what one. All right, so um, this is a program, and what time it is, because it's, it's getting late. Oh, we're at the end, and yeah, we're at the end. Is that this program calculates the charges of a DVD rental, you know, and what happens is, look at uh, what happens, okay? If they have a do loop. How many DVDs are being rented, okay? See in the number of DVDs, do. If DVD count, modulus three is equal to zero, all right? So what? If they have three, three modulus three is zero. If they have six, six modulus uh, three is zero, all right? So what happens is how many DVDs are being rented? So they you know, put in a number. Now, it says what? DVD, um, see our DVD and then the count. So if it's three and three, and then it's free, all right? DVDs, uh, then whatever DVD count, DVD count would be zero, three modulus three is zero, zero is free. So continue immediately. So the continue will all automatically come back and do this. So I'm wondering why the, con why the continue is here, because it's gonna break out of this one, but it's gonna continue here. So what, what happens? Okay, it breaks out. It did six, six modulus three, six modulus three is zero, all right? So it printed out, uh, what, uh, how many free? Uh, they rented six, is the DVD, is, well, is DVD one a current release? Oh, it's actually a current release, I didn't see that. Oh, down here. So it, 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 it continued out of here. As long as there was no what? as long as there was no uh, modulus. So, cause what? If there was a modulus, then there was a free one. See how DVD and then whatever the modulus, say if there was four, you know, they get that four, that, that four one would be free, all right? Then continue, all right? So only, okay, if it's zero, they doing, they, they're gonna do this, all right? So, so when it was six, it was a modulus, it skipped all of this and went to this, all right? If you, uh, if you uh, wanna continue and then it continued on with the program, all right? So the continue statement, like I say, it skips every, every statement. It tells us it, it, uh, when the continue uh, statement is encountered, all statements in the body of the loop that appears after it is ignored. And like I say, and the loop is uh, prepared for the next iteration. All right? So it did skip everything in here, but really not was in after this, well, the loop, yeah, this is the loop. So it skipped everything and went down here, start all over again, all right? So yes, and then it asked uh, DVD, how many DVDs? Six, then it went to the end, yes, is the DVD can release, no. Okay, three DVDs is free, right? Because it was a modulus. Why no? I'm wondering why. 
I'm not I'm kind of gonna get it. Oh no, then it add this. All right. But once once uh once it get this, it, it goes down to here. It continues on. All right. Because with the six, when six was in a is DVD one a current release. All right. So it skipped all, it skipped this. No, it went here. So it kicked out of this. It should have skipped this if it's six. Because what? Six modulus three is zero. It should print out DVD, right? It printed out DVD discount six is free. No. I don't see why uh, six wouldn't be for, uh, I don't see why six wouldn't be free either. Six modulus three is zero, right? I'm not understanding. I'm gonna have to look at this one and to see why, why this one didn't go to this, uh, this here also, because six modulus three is zero. Nine modulus three is zero with no remainder. If DB decline modulus three is zero, we're doing this. But it didn't do that with six. With six, it didn't print. I'm gonna, have to, I'm gonna look at that. I'll check that out. All right. Anybody with any questions? I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to get you to understand. Anybody with any questions? about uh, the files or whatnot, any questions? All right, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna post the test, and this is chapter five, and uh, we have our assignments already posted, correct? That's the module. Yes, sir, they're posted. All right, all right, so the tests are posted, I mean, the assignments are posted, all right. Uh, I'll post test five, Okay, you have the test. I'm gonna assign anybody starting, anybody with any questions. They shouldn't be that hard because they I think they pick it back and off the other. You're just using two of the uh two I think you're using two of the uh loop processes in each one. Right? So like I say, you may use a for loop and a while loop together or whatnot. All right. And make sure you test your programs that they do work, all right? Because normally when you have loops. It might even one time you might do a Y, one time you might do a no. Make sure both options do or, or, or whatever do work. But I think I just asked you to do a Y. That means anything else other than Y should still hang it out, right? So, yeah. So, all right. So, uh, your, your assignments are posted. You got until I think the the 20th, what, what, what date is that? The 30th, I think maybe it's, it's Friday. Yeah, you get until Friday. And I'll pull the test. The test will be due on Monday, all right? By Monday. Okay. All right. So if it ain't no questions, uh did we have a chapter five quiz? Yeah, I think I'll pull I'm gonna post the quiz and the test. No, I'm not posting okay. at the same time, but I'll I'll make the quiz maybe a day earlier before the test due, you know. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. All right. So if there ain't no questions, I'll catch y'all on next class period. All right. Yes, sir. All Thank right. you. Uh, You're welcome. Bye-bye. Be careful of the hurricane.